five, four. It's so funny not being able to hear you. Hey, everybody. Rick Bassman here for Talking Tough, coming to you live, as always, from Maui. And it's, uh, man, it's been a bitch of a day. And you guys know me. That's about the uh, the worst profanity I'll ever use on this show. And I'm going to want to save that. It's not much of a story, but I want to save that because I think I know the guest we have on today, Greg Champion, is going to be able to talk about bad experiences, negative experiences, and put that into perspective, how, how, we, how we conduct our lives when we, when we face adversity and things that we don't want to face. Um, so we'll save that for a moment. It's Christmas week. Uh, I'm up here with uh, my three beautiful babies, uh, Wilson. Our new pup is doing great. I know uh, some of you want to know about that. We get a lot of messages asking about Wilson. This is a uh, one month anniversary with us tomorrow. So we're back up to near full strength. We've got three pit bulls up here in our house on Maui. They're beautiful. They're wonderful. They're my Christmas blessing for sure. Uh, I don't have a lot to say today. Um, I'm excited about our guest. He is, you know, in, in, in a day and age, okay, people are challenged right now. People are going through, and our listeners, myself, pretty much everybody, with COVID, with um, with the economy, with Christmas. I mean, it brings everything to to I dare say a boiling point. A lot of people are, if they're not in a perfect place, who's ever in a perfect place? If they're not in a great place, they're probably more predisposed to do things that are not good, not good for them. Uh, we all know that we're, we're in the age where most people are okay talking about bad behavior and the antithesis of that. Sobriety is a very, very big and I dare say hot subject in the world today. Uh, the guest today, and I'm really glad he's with us, is at the very pinnacle of that world right now. He is not only at the top, he's a pioneer and he's doing things in that industry that are blowing people's minds and are gonna blow a whole lot more minds when the world really finds out about it, which is just happening right now. So without further explanation, because I want uh, I want him to tell his story and let you all know what he's doing. It's uh, my distinct pleasure to introduce today from Startup Recovery and the Recovery Playbook, which we're gonna get into in a very serious way, Mr. Greg Champion. Hey. Thank you, Rick, for having me on. I, uh, uh, what a great man, intro. Man, it's good. Yeah, I, I, I wing these things. And like I said, it's been a hell of a day. So I just got in. I mean, I've been, I thought I'd be here four or five hours ago, rushing, rushing, rushing all day long. Um, I, you and I met, what, five minutes ago or seven minutes ago. We've never spoken before. Uh, we don't know each other, which is rare yeah. for talking tough. Most guys are lifelong buddies. We've done no prep. So we're winging it today, but man, I, I know you're, I know you're a pro. Um, yeah. When you go, I know you do a lot of media too. So you're probably asked this question often, Greg, what do you do? Tell us about yourself. What, what, how do you introduce yourself to the world if they don't know you yet? Well, the short answer is that I'm a recovery coach. Um, and I know that that, that kind of falls in the life coach uh, umbrella, Rick, but um it really is um, my, I should say, my calling, my mission. And I, and I say this to you because uh, a few years ago, I did a, um, a TED Talk uh, on the, uh, discovering your it factor. And um, as you know, my last name is Champion. And so when you're born with that last name, the pressure is on. You, you have to live up to it every day. And, and it's impossible. It is. And part of my um, becoming um, addicted to drugs, becoming uh, an alcoholic, was trying to keep up to that pressure. And in my recovery, at least in the last five years, I began examining what my it factor was. And so I looked at the name champion and it says the first definition in Webster's Dictionary is a winner, leader, all the stuff we think it is, right? But if you look at the second definition, it says someone who champions a cause or who's a mentor. And that is what I am today. I, I will champion your cause, Rick. I will champion the guy down the street, the woman who is, is a, an empty nester, the young man who um, failed out of college. I will champion your cause. And then I have enough life experience to mentor you 
um, into finding a, a new a new uh, a new life for yourself. Our our, our tagline at, sh- at Startup Recovery is shifting addiction to passion, taking away the uh, the drugs and alcohol, keeping the addictive mind because I think all human beings have that addiction. You know, I think you're probably a workaholic. I'm a workaholic, right? There's people that are into gambling and food and sex, right? But in terms of of, of, of good addictions, what I try to do is find someone, uh, try to find your passion, Rick, and then I say, okay, let's go become addicted to that. And that's that's what I am. You know, that, and I love that answer. When when I thank you, when I did the intro, we I focused almost entire actually I focused entirely on on addiction and sobriety and you're in that world for sure but mm-hmm. but i do know your program the way it's designed from what i understand is is for everybody mm-hmm. and and i want to get into the i don't want to get into the recovery playbook yet yep. but i do want to get into that in a moment i know this system you've created through startup recovery through the book is really for anybody that's looking to have a better life whether they're yeah. addicted to a, a drug or alcohol or not. Is that correct? It, it, really, it really is. It is You know how I, I think, Rick, all of us get to that point in life, more points in life, where we want to push the reset button on our life. Maybe it's at 30. Maybe it's at 41. Maybe it's at 52. At some point, we want to push the reset button. And what the recovery playbook does for everybody, it says, hey, I'm ready to get a new lesson plan. And in that lesson plan, we have intentions. We do something around it. We, we call it a digital scrub unpack the backpack of shame. Um, we do uh, a, a great exercise, the right to write, the examination of your life story. And so we'll, obviously we're going to get deeper into this, but what's cool about this is anybody's at a crossroad. Anybody's had trauma, drama, or pain, they get above it and then they use the playbook to get them moving forward. Okay. Yeah. And, and I, your partner, Jeffrey Van, who's a great guy and I've developed a nice phone relationship with Jeff was kind enough to give me access to the playbook online. And I appreciate that very yeah. much. So I have had a chance to look into it, do more to look into it. I put a lot of time into it and it's an amazing structure. So everybody out there will get more into that. Mm-hmm. And of course we're going to tell people where they can get it because they're going to be interested. I know that yep. Good. After we get more of it. What I want to ask you, I have a lot of questions to ask. Here's one though. You mentioned everybody in life wants at one point or another to press the reset button. When did you realize that you had to press the reset button? First of all, do you mind sharing your age with us? Is that okay? I will be 52 on Sunday, December 27th. So um, happy almost birthday. Thank you, kind of, thank you. And I know that you're a man now on top of this world. I mean, you can see that just talking to you for a few minutes. But again, I know your your bio. Before you became that, I mean, where... Where were you in life? When was it? Were you, you probably didn't have these words at the time, but when you had to press the reset button, how long ago was that? Well, I would say, um, you know, uh, you know, we can go into my, um, how I would say we can go into my dark days, maybe um, later about how I was in, I was an animal and, and all that. But Absolutely. really, it was, I, I pushed the reset button um, twice in my life. Once was in 1997. Um, I had uh, four years of sobriety and I arrived in Los Angeles and I wanted to be in the entertainment business. And um, I slept on a friend of mine's couch for four, four months. Um, I took odd jobs, a production assistant. I was an extra on Jay Leno's show a couple of times. Um, uh, you know, whatever, we, whatever we do. And then I got a job at NBC and then eventually a job at Fox. And in that early, in those early years is where I came up with the shifting addiction to passion. And this is where the reset button came for me was I was in my uh, late twenties. I was running around with a bunch of guys who were still wanting to do a bunch of social stuff. They wanted to go out and drink all night. They wanted to go do blow all night. And they really thought they were going to meet Steven Spielberg at the Mondrian hotel at, at, at 11 o'clock at night. You know, that's not going to happen. Uh, and we, don't hang out at the sky bar, but that's all right. right. No, I know. Right. Well, well, and, and, and the thing is, Rick, for me, what, what I, I sat back and I go, God, you know, I don't drink or use anymore. What am I going to do with those hours? And so here's what happened on Thursday nights. I stayed in and on Saturday mornings, I went into the office and I, and I used, I used four hours on Thursday to, to write and develop scripts. 
and I used uh, four hours on Saturday mornings when I knew all my friends would be hungover, right? And I went into the office from eight to 12. And those eight hours times 52 weeks, I was able to build resources and content and a, and a career. And, and that ended up being um, a foundation for shifting addiction to passion was I used those eight hours to build a career in Hollywood. My second reset button came five years ago when I'm speaking at a 12 step meeting. Let me turn this stuff off. Sorry about that, Rick. Um, well, it was me. I just did the same thing. That's all right. Yep. Um, my bad. Um, the, um, the second reset happened five years ago when I was winding down my entertainment career. Um, I was kind of done with the, the people I worked with, um, wasn't earning as much as I thought I needed to be earning. And I was speaking at an A meeting and I said, hey, uh, I've been sober 20 years. Uh, I mentored uh, 100 kids to their first or second jobs. I've taught entrepreneurship at um, USC. Um, and I have a wife and two small children. And, um, and what happened was that um, that uh, 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 this woman comes up to me, this little like Yoda woman comes up to me and she goes, Greg, you would make a great group facilitator at my rehab. And Rick, I had to get my phone out and Google group facilitator. Now, what a group facilitator is, is someone who comes into the rehab and works with the, the residents um, and tries to get them moving. And, you know, it's meditation facilitator. There's a, there's a sound bath facilitator. And I said, I'm going to be a group facilitator. And so what ended up happening was I turned that language into recovery coach. And what I brought to those clients was this was a reset button for myself was I'm now a recovery coach, but I brought entrepreneurship meets recovery. And that's been my, my second reset. Um, both gave me great passion, having a 20 year career in entertainment, marketing and PR world great passion. And now that I'm in the recovery world, and again, I still have the passion. All right. All right. Great. Thank you. Now, what I want to do with that, and we're, I want to absolutely expand on everything you're doing now, but I want to go backwards in time first. You, you and I have a friend in common, Darren Prince. Yep. And people look up Darren's bio. I mean, he Darren's really out there now, especially with the release of his book yep. about, about his bottom and, and what that looked like. People typically would know Darren Prince as agent to the stars. Um, there'd, be, there'd be all these accolades, and he has all those things, of course. Uh, for me, people know that I was you know, a high-ranking Walt Disney executive, uh, an agent at William Morris, a successful owner of you know pro wrestling and mixed martial arts companies. Mm -hmm. But I've told my story so many times on this show where, where I think people out there listening relate more is to the bottom. You know, I've, I've been homeless. I've been addicted. I've been shot. I've been near death so many times. I've, you know, I've almost lost count at this point. If you, if you don't mind, could you summarize what the worst time in your life looked like? How would you characterize that? How would you describe that? Because I want people out there, our listeners who are looking at this guy going, wow, this guy's on his game. He's cool. He's successful. He's energetic. But it's important for people to know, especially people that are struggling, you know this better mm -hmm. than I do, what's possible no matter where you are. So what's well, been the worst for you? You know, Rick, it really, my bottom, my rock bottom, um, you know, I, I I was, I came from a good house. I had a, a, a wonderful mother. I had a, a stepfather who was a World War II vet from the greatest generation. You know, he was there on D-Day. Mm -hmm. used the GI Bill to get uh, a degree at uh, Northwestern. And, um, you know, he, he met my mom. And uh, the best part of that was he loved my mom. And, and I really love to see a man love my mom, you know. And what he did for me is he taught me how to tie a tie, shave my face, open a door for a lady, all that old school stuff, right? Um, but still, my ism, my alcoholism, my addiction uh, drove me from being a, a private Catholic schoolboy to a college educated kid to a drug dealer. Um, I was using those Tijuana connections that we talked about earlier to move a lot of marijuana um, across from San Diego to East Coast cities. Um, because part of what um, the American promise was, hey, if you get a college degree, you'll get a good job. Well, that didn't happen for me. I didn't get a good job. Um, and so I looked for a shortcut and, and being a, a guy who was delivering large amounts of marijuana to the East coast, 
I was around some shitty people, you know, and then I began feeling really shitty about myself. And um, what I will say is um, between ages 22 and 24, Rick, I got arrested eight times. Um, all my charges involved two things, Greg Champion and drugs and alcohol. <laughs> And, um, you know, a couple DUIs, I got a couple assault charges. Uh, Rick, I was down in New Orleans for Mardi Gras and I got arrested twice in 24 hours. And this is how, Congratulations. yeah, this is how stupid I am. I walked up to this big Irish cop and I said, sir, what can I get in trouble for? He says, don't piss in my streets and don't fight in my streets. So Rick, what two things did this idiot get arrested for? I don't know, I'm guessing you peed on the cop and then punched him. <laughs> very, very close. Very close. Yeah. But but that's that that's that's summed up my my animalism. I call it my animalism. It wasn't Greg. It was it was Greg the asshole, part of my French that was out there. And then um and then I do have to tell you my 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 real bottom was came um about a year later when I got arrested uh, in an airport with 50 pounds of pot. I get in front of the judge and he says, uh he says, um, Greg, I'm looking at it here. You got a college degree. You came from nice parents. And, you know, your last name's champion. Why are you doing this? Well, yeah, what's the deal, right? Yeah. yeah, what's the deal, right? And I will say, you know, part of it was I wanted to be a tough guy. You know, I wanted to be a tough guy, but I'm not a tough guy. You know, I'm just not. Um, and uh, I can hold my own. I, I hold my own in enough fights. Um, but, um, you know, I, I, I guess we have this fantasy that movies and TV shows create about drug dealing and, and, and all that kind of stuff. And, and I, and the more I did drugs and alcohol, the more the fantasy grew, but in the reality, Rick, I, I was not anywhere near a tough guy in, in that. Um, so I get in front of the judge and he says, Greg, here's what I do know. If I see you in my courtroom in the next six months, I'm gonna give you the five years hanging over your head. And so I left his courtroom. Um, 18 days later, I'm in my little sports car. So, I, so no, no sentence at that time. No sentence. No sentence. Right. Okay. Um, um, and um, but I'm looking. I mean, Rick, I, I have blonde, curly hair, bright blue eyes, and a California tan. I, I am not going to fare well in any any prison. prison would not have been a fun place for you. Yeah, no matter right. how tough you are. Yeah. Right. So so um, and so um, you know, and and, and I want to tell folks this that that. It, 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 my bottom is my bottom, but also redemption and, and the God shots. I don't know, Rick, if you believe in God shots, but boy, I sure do. Um, and so 18 days later, I'm in my little sports car. Uh, I've had a six pack of Moosehead, a couple of joints, and I have a couple of bindles of Coke on me. And I'm driving to the party of the year. Now, Rick, I'm 25 years old at this time. Uh, all my high school friends have left me and all my college friends have left me. I'm only hanging out with lower companions, you know. They left you because they didn't like what you were doing. What oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They, 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 they just did not see the Greg they went to high school and college with. Okay. They, they weren't, they weren't attracted to the glamour of your world. Certainly. They, they didn't want to stay up till four a.m. on a Tuesday. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Um, Get it. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you do, Rick. I'm sure, I'm sure we're, we're soul brothers. Um, so I, I walk into the party of the year and I don't know anybody. And the guy comes up to me and he says, hey, you got any uh, Coke on you? I said, yeah, uh, you know, come on, come on down. We go down the stairs, down to my little sports car. I pull out my Duran Duran CD case. This is 1994. Now, now, now Rick, don't judge me, but you know, Duran Duran had a few good albums back then. I I, I still love Hungry Like the Wolf, one of my favorite yeah, songs. Yeah, Hungry Like the Wolf and, and Girls on Film. And, and, you know, I like and, that um, one, so that's all right, yes. I okay. love around around. No judgment here. And and, and so I, I chop up a couple lines, right, and I put it out there and, and like this, and guess what happens? In comes San Diego Police Department. Mm -hmm. And so the uh -oh. next morning, the next morning I wake up in the jail cell, fetal position, cold floor, and I'm done because now – that pretty boy with blonde hair, blue eyes, and a California tan is going to prison. I'm going. Um, and so I, I get I, I kind of stagger myself a little bit, sit up on, on that cold bench, that cold steel bench that you know in any jail. Mm -hmm. And I hear a voice from the corner, and it says, um, Greg, there's a better way. Greg, there's a better way. And it, there's no one else in the cell with me, so I don't know where this voice is coming from. And it says, call your mother. Call your mother. Now, Rick, I love my mother, but uh, the last person I want to call and tell her that I'm having going to prison for five years is my mother, 
right? But I do call her. And um, it just goes to show you that the facade of being a tough guy is I'm calling my mother and I'm a big tough drug dealer. You know, I call mommy <laughs> and I go, here's what's going on. And she says, go to church, go to church. And so I got bailed out. I went to six o'clock mass in San Diego at St. Brigantine's right there on Cass Street. I always say that kind of stuff just in case your audience goes, hey, I've been there. I know what he's talking about. Um, and after the mass, Rick, um, the priest says, hey, I'm going to do confessions tonight. I got six priests, three over here, three over here. Pick a door and go into confession. And my thinking is this. This is how sick I am as, a, as, a, as an addict and alcoholic. If I say my confession, I'm set free so I can go out tonight. That that's my mindset. Sounds logical to me, right? Right, right. Mm -hmm. So I go in this confessional, and it's not like the Godfather with the screen, right? You know, they, they, they make up a name, Tim. You know, um, I'm, I'm looking at a man, white hair, blue eyes, white cloak, and he says, "Son, tell me your sins." And I say these four things. I say, "Father, when I um, smoke a lot of pot, I uh, show up on Christmas on December 27th." When I drink a lot, I go into bars and I hurt people. When I do cocaine, I date three women at the same time and they have no idea I'm dating them all at the same time. And when I do all three, I fly large amounts of marijuana to the East Coast. Priest takes a step back, puts his hand up and he says, son, stop. I said, why? He says, do you think you have a problem with drugs and alcohol? And I say, no. And then Rick, you know, when you have somebody that you're mentoring and you have to look them in when they're giving us kind of a bullshit answer, right? He gave me that look that a good mentor or a good boss gives you. And so I paused and I said, well, it's funny you say that, Father. You're the second man who's ever asked me that question. He goes, who was the first? I said, my stepfather. He goes, what was your stepfather's name? I said, Walt Janicki. Priest reaches over, grabs my hand and says, I was, I'm Walt, I was Walt Janicki's first sponsor. Wow. All right. And, and, and. And to your audience who doesn't know, in a 12-step program, you have a sponsor who guides you through um, the program. It's a mentor. And right then, Rick, was the, the, the universe, the higher power, God, however you want to look at it, just came down on me and said, son, whatever this guy says next, you're going to go do. And because I was facing five years in prison, I thought to myself, whatever this guy says, I'm going to do. So here's what he says. He says, your sins don't belong here. They belong four blocks up, and there's a 12-step meeting starting at 7.30, and I think you should go. And that was 11-7-1994. That was my first 12-step meeting I attended. And um, that priest uh, ended up being my first sponsor. <laughs> and he told me to do three things when I went to his office, Rick. And you're going to like the last one. He told me, don't drink or use. Go to 90 meetings in 90 days and take boxing lessons. Okay. Boxing lessons. Why? Why boxing lessons? Had, because when you had, when you do the first two, you're going to have so much resentment and anger. You got to put it somewhere. It's an outlet, of course. It's an outlet, right? Now, what happened, Rick, was this priest, along with my lawyer, began going to all my all my hearings. And I got to tell you something. When you walk into a courtroom with a collar. You go from five years to four years to three yeah, years. You, you lucked out with this guy on more. Oh, more totally, totally, yeah. to two years. And so I was sentenced to two years in prison. And uh, we can certainly go into that story if you want to go into that story. <laughs> but for a white kid, uh, right. white kid from a nice neighborhood, I, I, I was there. I was there amongst the, the population. Where'd you, uh, where'd you do your time? Connecticut. What's a uh, max medium? What? Uh, level, level three. Level three. Okay. Yep. And you were, uh, you were in uh, gen pop there. Yep. Yep. And, and most of the, uh, I'm talking in abbreviations. You explained sponsors a moment ago. I, I would say, and you know, our, our producer, John Paws is with us today. He has a yep. microphone. I usually call him on. He's hysterical and he's great to bounce stuff off of. He can hear us today. Um, but his microphone's not working, so we can't hear from him. But right. I say, John, what percentage of our viewers and listeners do you think know about sobriety and prison? And he, I'm sure he'd say 90% plus. Yeah. So real quickly, we don't need to get bogged down by it. What was the 
pretty blonde hair, blue eyed boys experience like in level three gen general population? So um, I arrived there with no clothing, just the clothes on my back. Mm -hmm. um, and my cellmate was, and this is bananas, was the leader of the black gang. His name was Supreme. Ooh. And 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 I walk into my cell and Mary J. Blige, uh, um, I'm going down is on. And I will never forget that song. And I love uh, Mary J. Blige. My wife says she's your black girlfriend. Yeah, she is my black girlfriend. Um, and so I sit down on my bunk and, and, and Supreme takes one look at me and goes, I ain't never seen anybody like you. He's like, where are you from? I said, California. And I will say this, another God shot, Rick. I did, uh, so I was scheduled to do a year there. Supreme took me under his wing and really learned from me. Like learn, wanted to know about geography, wanted to know about sports teams, wanted to know about um, the, the type of dealing I was doing. I mean, he protected me. I don't know why, you know, but he did. And also I was so naive to the prison population. I mean, I'm telling you, I would eat breakfast with the white guys. I would eat uh, lunch with the Puerto Ricans and I would eat dinner with the, with the black guys. I would go from all over. I didn't know what the rules are. And here's why. Before I went in the jail, I asked Father Bill. I said, Father Bill, I said, I'm going. What should I do? What advice do you have? He goes, just be you. Just be you. And what I will say, Rick, and you don't know me that well, is that my mother raised me to be good in any situation. Anybody, any religion, any creed, any color. And I think a lot of that um, teaching by her, she was, a, she was a teacher and an educator, allowed me to have that, that ability to go through different people and different demographics. Um, I could talk sports with all the athletic guys. I could talk hustle with all the hustle guys. Um, and, um, and really, um, Supreme protected me. I did get in a couple, a couple scuffles on the basketball court, the football field, but you're going to get in there. That's why you're there, you know. Um, and what's you'll funny? Look again. You, you and what's funny? Again. What's funny, Rick, is those boxing lessons. They came. They 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 worked. I, it's almost like the priest said. You, you, he almost you knew. You're gonna... a little, you're ahead of most of the population. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Are you um? Are you still in touch with Supreme? I'm not, I'm not. And, and Rick, one of the things, one of my life passions is to find this guy, is to find this guy because I, I owe, I'm indebted to him. I mean, I get teared up because it's like this guy, he, I mean, I, I, I'm just indebted to him because why he had no reason to protect me. The day I left, he went into the hole. He got himself in the hole because he couldn't say goodbye to me. Well, if you can be in touch show, with him, obviously. Right. It'd be nice to be in touch with him, obviously, but I'm sure. I mean, I mean, Rick, I, I mean, my, my one of my things I hope maybe out of this show, someone's watching his his real name is Andre Reed. He grew up in South Carolina. Um, he looks like uh, Richard Sherman of the of the 49ers and Seahawks. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, this is this is um, something that has been a life thing for me. What did it where, whatever happened to this guy? Um, right. Yeah. Well, you know what? If he's out there, some you, there is a chance someone listening to this will know. So hopefully you'll get some. But, uh, but Rick, what I also will say this is I, I, I really look at that prison time. I was able to stay sober. I got in phenomenal shape. I learned meditation, right? Um, uh, I learned how to play well with others at the sandbox, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm so grateful for the life I'm in. I went from the prison to the Palisades, you know? Prison can be, it's going to sound crazy, but it can be a very positive life affirming experience. Uh, there, there's so many cliches that I think we use in our lives. One of them, of course, you know, this is wherever you go, there you are. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And hell, I mean, prison can be hell or yep. it can be, like I said, a positive life changing experience, depending upon where you are in your headspace. And you were obviously entered in a good headspace and had some luck once you got there. That yep. doesn't hurt either. Yeah, when, when I when I came in, I had nine months of sobriety. So I, I celebrated my first year of sobriety in prison. Okay, so the priest called you out, the guy that yep. became your sponsor. Yep. He, he asked if you had a problem. You said no. Now, did you – so you're sober. I get that. Yep. Do you, do you now, in retrospect, 
believe you did have a problem or are you not taking drugs and alcohol because you just have made a decision not to do that? Well, I, I to, so I think I was, I think I followed his direction to get the heat off. I, that's why I'm asking that. Question. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I de definitely get the heat off to get that sentence down um, to, 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 to not go to prison, but I ended up going anyways. And what ended up happening for me was a, a transformation was, Hey, I actually like this. I like the way I feel. I like the way I look. Um, and the great thing that he said to me when I said goodbye to him, and, I, and, and before I got on the plane to go, to go, he says, you look really scared. I said, yeah, I'm going to prison. He goes, I'll make you this promise. You take it's Greg plus drugs and alcohol equals jail, right? He's like, when you get out, you take drugs and alcohol out of the equation. You'll never go back to jail. So in 25 years, how many times have I been to jail, Rick? And no drugs and no alcohol in the last 25 years. No. Zero. Good for no. you, man. Man, Greg, I wanted, I'll tell this, I wouldn't say this to many people, but I'll tell you, I haven't, my my, my DOC, drug yeah. of choice. For drug of choice. Hey, look, look, look at us talking a little combo here. Yeah. <laughs> my, my, my DOC was narcotic pain pills. And when I started them, I needed them. I was in bad, bad shape. And then I didn't need them, but I still took them. You know that, you know that story times a thousand. Mm -hmm. I barely, rarely ever think about it these days. And I was, I mentioned it to you earlier. I had a, I had a kind of a bitch of a day. And on the, in the grand scheme of things, it's not a big deal. You know, I went to my driver. I, I'm on, in Hawaii. When you move from, a, from the mainland within your first four years, you have to take a road test for your driver's license, if you can believe that. I mean, heck, I started driving when I was 11. I'm a pretty competent driver at this point. So go to the road test. First of all, I got there an hour early, according to the, the lady that was there. She was wrong, but she had an attitude, and you can't challenge that because that's mm -hmm. a negative point right away. So I came back an hour later, and guess what? You ready for this? I failed my driving test. <laughs> it's not, it's not, right? It's... um. It's pretty embarrassing to admit it, but whatever. Uh, and then I had to go back to DMV to sign up for another one. It's three hours at DMV. I mean, it screwed my day. And I'm like, man, it'd be really good. Not good. Wrong word. Man, I would love to have a shot of Jack and a couple of Norcos right now. That would just solve everything. Now, that only lasted a few seconds because I'm not going to do that. And I know I'm not going to do that. But I felt it, and it's been the first time in a while. And then I'm like, here's here's what I did to combat it. And I like to tell these tales because yeah, yeah. people out there, I think, need help and need inspiration. And I want to get to that in a moment. I'm yeah, start no, and, Rick, and Rick, you need to tell this stuff because there, there is no one way to do it. There is no right. one way. So, yeah. yeah well, my, my, my way today was, first of all, that's stupid, and I know that. It's not going to help you. It's not a good thing. But I immediately went into gratitude. I'm like, oh my God, I think about the times I was homeless, the times I was near death. And I'm like, so my problem right now that's making me think about drugs and alcohol is that I failed my driver's test and I have to spend time at the DMV. I'm like, come on. So I was over it that quickly. But it's funny that I went there though. I'm still, I've, I, I, I take stock of that so I can remember this experience for next time. Cause there's always a next time. Yep. Um, to, to build that muscle and build that strength, build that resilience. So there are people out there today that are going to watch this and listen to this that are, they've lost their jobs. Thankfully, mm -hmm. you and I are, are doing okay. Yep. I think we're, we're pretty much the exceptions and not the rule right now. Professionally, mm -hmm. we're both doing okay. Um, we both have nice homes. Mm -hmm. uh, we both have support systems. Uh, I had times when I had none of that. And there are a lot of people out there who will listen to this who have none of that right now. They are, they're scared. They're without, to their minds at least, without resources and probably triggered. So you come across a person like that right now. What can you tell them they can do to start better in their lives right now? improving their situation today. What can they do? Assuming that in their mind and in their pocketbook, they have no resources. 
Well, in terms of in terms of what I would say, I always say kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. Um, you know, if you got two cars, get down to one car. If you got um, if you if you have to go from a four bedroom house to a two bedroom condo, you know, downsize, downsize to get to get to reality because a lot of us, especially in America, we live beyond our means. And and I think you you would agree with that, Rick. And so what I would say is just you got to simplify. And, and I would say, here's my three things. You got to simplify. You got to surround yourself with people, a, a community, a tribe. And so for me, again, in my 25 years, I've been broke twice. Absolutely broke. Not a penny in, a, in the can. And, but I kept going to meetings and I kept raising my hand and I kept sharing. So I had the benefit of a 12-step group. There are other support groups that I highly recommend. And here's why. We human beings, we need connection. You know, there's a famous TED talk that says the opposite of addiction is connection. Absolutely. So keep it simple. Be connected. Right. And then listen to your inner voice, Rick. So I'm going to tell you something. I got started drinking using when I was 13, 14 years old. Most people do in the United States around 13, 14 years old. Yep, 13. Yep. 13. Right, Rick. And, here, and here's what I think it is. I think it's um, a you're going through puberty. B, you discover the opposite sex, so you discover what you're interested in over there, right? In terms of physicality. And then last but not least, guess what's available now? Drugs and alcohol, right? And so we we that's the kind of the, the perfect scenario of, of of getting you to to start using drugs and alcohol. But it takes away your joy. So Rick, I'm gonna give you a little recovery playbook 101 right here for the last point. So we have we have we want to keep it simple, we want to find community, and the last thing we want to find joy. So here's here it is. So before I started using drugs and alcohol, I loved the skateboard. I loved the body surf. And I loved mint chocolate chip ice cream from Baskin Robbins. Okay? As a 50-year-old man, 51-year-old man, I skateboard with my 10-year-old. I body surf with my 8-year-old. And two nights ago, we had mint chocolate chip milkshakes from Baskin Robbins. I brought that joy that I liked as an 8, 9, 10-year-old to my life now. And so I would say to you, Rick, what did you do for joy right here? Little, little nine-year-old, 10-year-old Rick for um, before drugs and alcohol. Yeah. You know, I, I appreciate that. And I'm going to call that a rhetorical question for now. I have a feeling you and I are going to become friends and we're going to have a lot of conversations. I have no memories of that age. None. whatsoever. Really? Okay. Yes. It's really weird, man. I grew up in, I had a nice household like you. Um, you know, my, my mom died very suddenly when I was 13. And that started a unbelievably yep. crazy few years. So I'm not surprised. I don't remember. So I don't know what I did. But uh, I'm listening to everything you're saying. And I'm applying it to, I'm going to, when we finish up today, I'm going to make a phone call to a young lady I was introduced to just a couple of days ago. Obviously, I won't say, say her name here. But the reason I was introduced to her is she is in in the desert in California right now. She is living in her car with, uh, she had two pit bulls. Mm -hmm. She was able to rehome one. She couldn't rehome the other. I'm very, I'm very deep in the pit bull rescue world. So yep, I, I, know that, I know that. All right. So we're introduced by a mutual friend as me being hopefully someone that could help. And in talking with her, I got her story. She's homeless in her car. She's had 14 major spinal surgeries. She needs a 15, so she's essentially disabled right now. And she's on her own. She loves this dog. Uh, we get called, I don't want to get into this too much, but mm -hmm. we get in rescue constant messages. Oh, hey, I need, I really love my dog, but um, I need to rehome them. Well, why? Oh, because, you know, I, we're moving or, well, good. Find a home where you can bring a dog. It, it's just amazing. We say no, 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 all day long. You take the people that need the help. This girl is out of resources. She had, we thankfully we found a home for the dog today. So she is now on her own in this car, disabled and no resources. I'm going to call her to be a support yeah. system to her. Um, I know what I would say, but man, I, I got the master on the phone right now or on, on our talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interview here. So. I understand what you said. It's a great formula. 
what would you do with that bill? How would you get into some of the details for a person like that? Because I, I come across in my life, like I'm sure you do, people that have hit such a bottom that they really have almost nothing. Well, I mean, what I would do, and again, uh, is um, we both have friends and uh, industry peers that would open up some doors for us. And, 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 and I'll give you an example. I was in a very similar situation uh, nine months ago. Uh, a, a young woman called me. She had a newborn and, um, and she, she wanted to remain sober. And she had a cat and she had a dog. And I said, look, I can get you into a sober woman's uh, sober, a sober house, right? sober living for women. With, and you get to keep your kid. She goes, what about the dogs? I go, we, we, I can't do anything about the dogs or the cat. You're going to have to get rid of them. You know, you're going to have to find a house. For them. She did not get rid of her dog or her cat. And also now she started having issues regarding the baby. Like CPS started coming, you know? And so this scenario that you're talking about right now is, hey, let's find a home for the dog. Then worry about her. And again, what I would do is I would open up my network of phone people. And I say, hey, can I bring this person, your friend, to a sober living for women, right, who don't have much money? I mean, they're nonprofits. I know at least three in the L.A. area. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing, what we've done. We've created a safe place for her. She has community, right? What did he do at sober livings? They heal. They, they have recovery. This woman needs to heal. So my promise to you is if you want to work on this together, Rick, that's my scenario is that, that we go get her from the desert and we ask one of our friends in the recovery business to give her 30 days to figure out what she's going to do next. You, you'll be surprised, Rick, and you know this. Um, just like when I went to LA for the first time, my friend let me sleep on his couch for four months. All I needed was that four months to kind of figure things out. Mm -hmm. We just need space and we need a safe place. And here's an old saying that I love. I need a, I need a, 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 I need a safe place to feel unsafe. Oh, yes, I know what you mean, right? Right? Yeah, a point. Yes, because you don't know what's coming after. But while you're there, you know you have a chance to do something. Right. And, and she, she, and, she, and listen, she, she'll never do it alone. Which you'll I, I've, I've learned that living on this planet for nearly 52 years is this: we, it's a we, our, us program. So we are us program. Yes. And, and, and so it's not, it's I would, not me, my, and I No. Absolutely. no, no, no. And, and when I say ism, and I was saying my ism before I self and me, <laughs> Yes. Yeah. I self and me. Got it. Good acronym. I never, I never yeah. heard that before. Okay. Yeah. So, so let's, when we do get off this, let's, let's figure out tomorrow morning what we can do for this young woman. And I'll put my resources and, 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 you know, you, and let's, let's get to work. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. So, thank you. Let, let's talk about the sober industry for a moment. If yep. you don't mind. Now, sure. I, I want to challenge you, and, and I hope this is okay. So, Go for it. Startup Recovery, your organization, mm -hmm. beautiful houses, by the way. What, what the website address is, please? Uh, startuprecovery.com. Great. John, if you could uh, scroll that across the screen for yeah. our viewers, that would be great. Startuprecovery.com. Yeah, beautiful website, amazing houses. Um, and you guys have great reviews. Your your company has really good reviews. Thank you. So the recovery industry, yep. to, my, to my vantage point at least, is under fire right now. And there you are, startuprecovery.com, everybody. Yep. We'll keep it on there for a minute so people awesome. can, you know, people that need it can look you up. You yeah. guys take insurance, right? No, no, no. What we we're, we're we're not a treatment center. We are a transitional living. So yes, so someone goes to treatment for thirty days, right? And then they come to us for ninety days for a much longer runway. Yeah. Okay. Good. And yep. you really work on resetting their. Life. Yes, that's it. Resetting life skills, community, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So the sober industry, I have. In my history, my personal history, have been in residence at two facilities. And I, I want to say, and I believe this now in retrospect, that I went in with an open mind and did my best. And I, I want to pre-qualify that because it's going to sound like I'm just complaining now. I, I would characterize these two places as absolutely, unequivocally being in it for the money. Mm -hmm. They had all the great advertisements, you know, individual programs. 
There was nothing yep. of the sort there. It was, we're going to take you, throw you in a group, whether it fits you or not. And the second there's an issue with your insurance or your pay, we're going to boot you so we can move someone in who can pay for the bed. Now, that is typically, from what I understand, that is more often than not the case with the industry. I know startup is, is an exception to that yep. from people that I've talked to in the industry and from reading Thank the you. reviews. Do you agree with that assessment or am I, am I off here? You're, 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 uh, unfortunately, you're spot on, my friend. Unfortunately, you're spot on. And, and one of the reasons why Jeff and I got into business a little over three years ago is we wanted to shake up the industry. We wanted to come in with a mission statement that was, hey, we are going to push the reset button. We are going to be, um, we are going to help you. I'm sober. Now what? I'm sober. Now what? And so why people go to treatment centers for 30, 60, 90 days, right? When they come out, they need a longer runway. And so what I'll say to you is this, is that some of those stories you, you mentioned are absolutely true. There's your little puppy, little baby in the background. Um, okay, um, one of the he's going to come on. Up, those yeah. Stories are absolutely 100% true. Um, and with, with the way we wanted to change the, uh, the 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 culture, at least at startup recovery, was hey, entrepreneurship, shifting addiction to passion, recovery coaching. We have sober mentors. Okay, now you you know the power of mentorship, right? You've been a mentor and you've been mentored, right? So what? So we thought we'd bring sober mentors into our program. Now each one of our residents gets a sober mentor. This is cool. In the industry they want to be in. OK, so let's just say I have an empty nester. She's recently divorced. She's 49 years old. She's got a degree from Cal Berkeley. Right. But she's been raising kids for the past 19 years. Right. Well, we will set her up with someone. But she wants to go into hospitality. Well, I'm going to go find a female sober woman who has lots of time sober, but also has success in the, in the hospitality industry. I'm going to introduce her to my my client. And that person's going to get a frontline view of what that industry looks like and what early sobriety looks like. And so, you know, we are different startup recovery is. And I do believe that some of the industry people that we do work with, we select who we work with. Like the peers we work with are, are really, we vet them just like they vet us. And, and we have a new partner with us, Patricia Myers. She was at Promises for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. She is the Mother Teresa of the industry. And, and yep. Jeff and I are so lucky to have her. And, and what I'll say is she's got a new term for, for us. We're going to be the gold standard of recovery. And, 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 and that is our goal in 2021. That is our goal in 2022 and 2023. And so what I can say to you is that we just want to continue to be the leader. Now, listen, I will say this, Rick. Our, we cater to C-suite executives, professionals, high net worth families, and millennials in trouble. That, that's our four categories. But we also have scholarship 15 people in three in three years. Oh, no kidding. Wow. All right. Okay. And so, yes, we, we, we do take a, a higher fee, but we will drop that if we find the right person who comes and meets with me and Jeff. We look them in the eye and they, and they are willing to be willing. They yes. got to be willing to be willing. Yes. And, and you know what that looks like. Absolutely. I don't. I don't want someone to be like a Greg Champion who's just who's just there to put out the fires for a few few weeks. I want someone who's going to be there, do the work, take direction, take direction, and be humble. Yeah, ready you to know? change lives. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you're you're providing a prescription to change lives, and yes, and that's what I love about your program. Because again, the rest of the industry, they'll 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 have their catch for it. Now we we both know where willing to be willing comes from. We yep. we know we know the big book and what comes with that. Yep. A lot of the industry has cute phrases that you know are, are of that note. You know, we're gonna we're gonna tailor a life for you, and then you get there. You know, what's the program? And they can't tell you. Obviously, um, not only do you have a program, you yep. have a written document now yep. that is showing people the way, and that's the recovery playbook. Uh, now, I I believe I have an understanding of it. But if someone, do you have a 30 second elevator pitch for the recovery oh, playbook? Yeah. And what is that, please? So the recovery playbook is a curriculum that has come from my own 25 years of being in recovery. It doesn't come from a book. It comes from life experience that I have survived. I've survived a mom dying of Alzheimer's. I've, just, uh, I've survived um, uh, bankruptcy twice. I have survived a, a, a sister committing suicide. 
And, and, and what I want to say to you is I've used those downward moments in life to pull myself up. And we've created 12 plays in the playbook from 10 intentions to the right to right to the digital scrub, to the mask you live in, to um, core values, right? And what we do is we walk every single one of our clients through, say, say they stay with us for 90 days. Every week they get one play. So the first play we do is core values. The second play is the 10 intentions. The third play is the right to right. And I work with them on and off for that week on that particular play, which is to enrich their lives and to move them forward. And so it's not only in our houses at Startup Recovery, but it's also online now, Rick. The what's recovery, the, what's the uh, address for that? So it's the recoveryplaybook.com backslash get started. John, if you could put that up, recoveryplaybook.com backslash get started. Get started. So Greg, people don't have to be at one of your houses or in your personal care to, to take advantage of the recovery playbook. No, not if they go to that address, Rick. Okay. I'm, I've been, we, we filmed all 12 lessons with me talking to you just like this one-on-one. -on -one. Hey guys, this is Greg champion. Today we're going to do this. And I walk you through the lesson and for a fraction of the cost, it would cost you to go to startup recovery. You can go and have the recovery playbook. And again, it has nothing to do with addiction. It doesn't it's I'm sober. Now what I'm out of trauma. Now what I just went through a divorce. Now what? Right. It's really life lessons to move you forward, to push the reset button. Um, and I think you you yourself would find great value in it um, in, in some in goal setting. Now, is it is it struck? Yeah, I, yeah, I know that I would because I've, I've, I've looked into it. Yeah, so I see yeah. that. Do you, is it structured? And this is for the benefit of our, our viewers. Is it structured in a way where it's is it easy for someone to follow on their own? Can, yes. can you do it self-sufficiently without For sure. a mentor? So, or a group? It's as easy as watching a YouTube YouTube clip. So right. I come on, I explain what we're going to do. I give a narrative story of how I came up with the play, right? And the success I found. And then once you're done listening to me and, and getting it, you then get a worksheet pops up and you fill out the questions. All right. And then those questions are sent to my team and we keep going back and forth. And then you eventually have your own playbook. Um, issued to you and that that yeah it, it's a remarkable it really is so any anybody can take advantage of this they can look up recoveryplaybook.com backslash get started yep. it's right on the screen um everybody out there recommend at least take a look at it whether you feel that you have or had a issue with drugs alcohol it, it is a playbook for life definitely do, do you guys oh, Rick, use oh, Rick, real quick, real quick? It's the recovery playbook. You got to add the the. Oh, John. all right, all right. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yes, no problem, yeah. no problem. My mistake. Thanks, John. <laughs> yeah, I see him doing it right there. Yeah. John, I miss hearing your uh, your 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 wise voice on the uh, podcast today, but uh, I know you'll be back up to uh, to speed soon. Uh, do you guys use the uh, the big book? Yeah, as so, part of recovery. So. Yes, we do. We are, we are, I would say the foundation for startup recovery is 12 step based. Okay. Um, we do have meetings, um, four meetings a week in house, um, with our community. Mm -hmm. Um, we, um, so one meeting will be around the steps. One meeting will be a speaker meeting. One meeting will be, um, men's and women's meeting. And then on Thursday nights, Rick, this is where we got to get you up there. Um, Darren's been up there. We have sober mentor night. And that's when we bring somebody in who has success and sobriety and they share their story, their experience, strength and hope for 25 minutes. And uh, it's powerful because here's what, not only do, do our, our residents and our alumni um, get to share, or they can also ask our mentor a question, you know, and it's a good back and forth. And we've had some pretty prominent people up there, people, last names you would know, Oscars on the mantle, gold medal winners, you know, um, and that's another thing about startup recovery is the ilk of people we have access to is unparalleled, unparalleled. And that comes pretty much through, through your life experience. And yeah. The I mean, people so, you've surrounded yourself. So Rick, you know, you're, you're a former entertainment executive. You know, if you're, if you're out in the world, 20, 25 years in entertainment business, you make a lot of friends. A lot of those friends end up being sober, you know, especially in our world. Yes, absolutely. Yep. 
And so, so those friends have become assets to me and my new company and my mission statement. And, and they love it. They love it. It's their way of giving back. And so, yeah, we are a big book, um, 12 step, but I also will say this, if someone comes and doesn't like what we're doing, we will explore smart recovery. We'll explore refuge recovery. Um, we, we want people, like I said to you earlier, Rick, we, everybody has a different version. There, there isn't one version, right? Same like with religion, of course, is whatever works for you. Yeah, what's, exactly. what's your personal relationship to religion, if I could ask? So, yeah. So I grew up Catholic mm -hmm. and I saw God as uh, an old white guy with a white beard um, uh, on a cloud with lightning bolts. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, what happened was between Father Bill Wilson pointing me to AA, right, where I had a spiritual experience. My God is this is the universe, is the ripple effect. Mm -hmm. And Rick, whatever I put out, I'm going to get back. And when I'm putting good juju back, I'm going to get ju good juju back, you know? And so um, that's my universe. And, and, and I also look at this one. You know uh, how Saturn and um, Jupiter were doing their thing last night, right? Well, I hate to tell you, but those planets have been in the same orbits for billions of years. That's correct. That's okay? Okay. Right. Also this, also this, Mother Nature is my, is, my, is my higher power. Here's why. Despite all of our science, despite all of our power, all of our might, can we stop an earthquake, a typhoon, a hurricane, a tornado? We can't, right? So something bigger than us exists, and that's my version of God. Do you – Um. all right, no, thank you. That, so you – you have not participated in, for lack of a better way, organized religion for a long, long time then. You know, I, I will say this. I, my girls go to a Christian school. It's a wonderful school. It's one of the best in L.A. And, and, and uh, you know, I made a lot of investments in my time. It's the best investment I've ever made is, is this Good. school. All right. Okay. And, and so it, it is Christian based. But um, we do go to church four times a year, Christmas, Easter, Mother's Day, and I, I think, uh, you know, someone's christening. You know, and, and we're, we're, cafeteria, we're cafeteria Catholics. Um, <laughs> so, but yeah, I, I really, I'm, I'm into spirituality. Um, my, my wife has bought, brought Buddhism into our house. Um, I, 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 Jeff is Jewish, you know, my partner. It, it's like, I, I take a little bit from everything, you know? Well, you're, you're, you're a student of life, man. I can see that, yes. We you know, know. I, and, it's, and it started early for me, Rick. I remember when I was 11 and they said, I want you to draw a picture of God. And I drew the old man on the cloud with the with the beard, right? And the old Rumpelstiltskin hearing thing like this, right? And as it comes down, it's it, it comes down over earth and every and it breaks up to little horns that are like um, little horns that are all the same size. And my, my perception of it was all the prayers coming from earth we're all going to be equally heard by God. That was at eleven. <laughs> wow you you were ahead of your you were ahead <laughs> of your time at that point, weren't you? Yeah, that, that is great. Yeah, man, I'm still trying to figure it out myself. I mean, it's just about it's just about being good and doing good. Yeah, I, there, yeah, right there with you. Yeah, That's because hard. because because Rick, I assume that when you were drinking and using and being an animal, you were not doing good. Yeah. That, that that's a tough one for I did some stupid things and some not nice things, but I, I like to believe it at the core. I, I always did want the best for everybody. I, I feel like I will always have something in me that wanted to be of service. But I, I know that when I was in, in the throes of my 15 years of narcotic use, certainly that I, um, I made some very bad moves. No doubt about it. Mm -hmm. Yes, no doubt. You, you were right. All right. So I've kept you longer than I typically would a guest, and I appreciate it. So it's Christmas. Your birthday is coming up at the end of this week. Happy birthday again. Thank you, kind sir. Thank you. Christmas is coming up in three days. So you and I, my friend, I'm glad to say are both very, very fortunate. Yep. We've, um, where we are in life, uh, what we have. So I, it's sort of a repeat of an earlier question. But I want to end this on the note for people out there that all they have is a telephone. So they've managed to listen to this somehow. They don't know what they're going to do next. They don't know what they're going to do tomorrow. They're 
they're scared, they feel like they're resourceless. What can we tell them they can go, go do right now to start to better their situation? Well, and you say they have no resources, right? That, that's what they feel. That's what, that's they, what they feel. feel. Well, you know, like um, I, I've always. There's always a resource. We know I, that. I, I've always, whatever, I have been down and out and against the ropes. Um, my mentors will say, when you feel like you're down and out, go help somebody who is down and out. And, yeah. and, 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 and I would say, go give out some meals on Skid Row. Go give um, some socks. Go, go to a dollar store and buy 10 pairs of socks for 10 bucks and go down to Skid Row. You watch the smile on their faces for getting warm socks on Christmas night. You know, so when you feel like you're against the ropes, you know, and you're down and out, go help someone out who, who is down and out. And that, that's, that's the best thing I can tell people because what you're telling me, Rick, it's not so much that they are, but they feel like they are. And guess what? Feelings are not facts. Feelings right. are not facts. I think that's great advice, and and I want to um, I, I just want to endorse that, and and, and I want to echo it. So anybody out there, that even if you're at a point where you can't even go to the dollar store, do find your local mission. Uh, have yep. you been to Midnight Mission before? I, yes. Yeah. Yep. That that's where yep. I've done my time. Also, now yep. the people all over the country, all over the world, listen to this. So there there's a Midnight Mission in every major city. There is. Yep. Somebody that's really depressed out there right now is going to be hearing us and probably going, F that, I don't want to go to a, a homeless mission. You know what? Go. Yep. If you're doubting it, I'm going to ask. I don't know who I am to give you advice, but I do. I want to try to give this advice out. I'm echoing Greg Champion's advice. Go to the mission in your area. Ask if you can serve meals for the day. I think you'd be amazed, A, how good it makes you feel, B, the perspective you gain, and you're going to meet somebody there that's going to help put you on a path where you need to go. So I, I think that's great advice. Great. And, and Rick, what you're, what you're telling people to do is to do contrary action. You know, the power of contrary action. There are so many things in my day that I don't want to do. And when I do it, I feel so much better on the other side, you know? Yes. And, and so I would encourage your audience to, to, to get into action be of service and get on the other side of it. You will feel so much joy, you know, and ultimately that's what we want. We want joy, you know, yes. and, um, and you know, what's better is it's way better to give than get way better. We, 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 we don't give to get, but we always end up getting more than we give. Absolutely. 1,000%, Rick, 1,000%. And that's why it is it, just keep giving, keep giving. The universe will come around in its own way to give you. Just keep giving. Yeah, you, you know what else I like to tell people? to, Like I said, I don't, far be it for me to give advice, but then I guess I, I give it. One thing I always recommend, I think you'll appreciate this, so I wanted to share it with you, and it doesn't cost a thing. So we're out there in the world right now. I always tell people, no matter what mood you're in, no matter how you're feeling, force yourself to the next first five people you come across today, go out of the way to be nice. Yeah. No matter how they respond, what they say to you, how they look at you, you know, they're not, provided they're not attacking you physically, yeah. of course, just be nice. Five, yeah. that, give yourself that goal, five. Rick, Rick. And I, I, if you hit five, watch what happens from there. Man. Rick, I, I, I knew I liked you from the beginning. I, and I have an old saying, good people know good people. And, 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 and what you just said, my version is this, just smile at five people. Just smile, yeah. you know, and, and, and open a door. I mean, just, just yes. the simplest things, yes. you know. Um, and, and you're right. It, it's really, uh, you know, being kind. You know, um, the we're talking about anybody can do. It doesn't oh, matter. for sure. And it's for, for fun and for free, for fun yeah. and for free. Just be kind. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate you being on. We're, yeah. we're past the time. There's, yep. um, you know, personally, there's something I'd like to invite you to that I think you would get a lot out of being part of. And I know the people who are part of it would, would love to have you involved. What's the best way to get in touch with you? Should I, I have your email address. Is that a good way to do it? Best way is, uh, yeah, Greg, G-R-E-G-G. Uh, -G -G, I have two Gs. Yep, um, have. At, at startuprecovery.com. I'm right. also on Instagram. You can find me there. 
And um, yeah, any 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 way, anything you want me to do, Rick, I, I'm your guy. I'm in your corner. Yeah, you'll you'll love this thing. I think um, I didn't. I, I tried to cut you off on the email address because I didn't want to make it public. But it sounds like you're open to people reaching out to you. Oh, all the time. I uh, uh, here's what happens. We'll do this show, and I'll get a, someone from Australia going. Hey, I heard that podcast you did with Rick. Okay. I've been sober for four months. I'm struggling. Boom! I will write back. That's great. That's, I, 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 I have to. It's just that, that's the way I operate. That's the way I operate. That's awesome. Well, everybody out there, you, you've met Greg Champion today. You can look up his great works, Startup Recovery, The Recovery Playbook. You can now get a hold of him personally, which I think is fantastic that you offer that, Greg. You know, I really appreciate you being on today and want to wish you and your family the greatest holiday season. And uh, again, happy birthday. Yeah, thank you, Rick. It, it's been it was I, I feel so overjoyed by being on your show. You 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 asked such great questions and um and I'm just grateful for our, our new friendship. I, I like I said, good people know good people. And I want to wish you a very Merry Christmas. And um and I know you'll love up your three little bubba's down there. Oh yeah. Um, I have a husky and a and a multi poo, um, both <laughs> rescues. What a both great rescues. That's yeah. awesome. Um, so we're a dog family. I get it. And, um, uh, again, uh, Merry Christmas and let's have a happy 2021. Absolutely. My, okay, my pleasure, Greg. Thank you so much. Yeah. Take care.